Well, hello, hello, Dixie Belle paint fans. It is Melissa coming on to you live on the Dixie Belle paint page from the Top Drawer RVA. How are you today? Nice to see you again. Welcome, thank you for joining me. It is Wednesday at 3 p.m. and this is my scheduled time slot to come hang out on the floor and play with paint. So who wants to hang out with me today and play with some paint? I've got a couple things going on and I'm gonna give you a little warning because uh, it might be a little bit of a different kind of a paint day today. So if you know me and you're a top drawer follower, you know that I have a house full of kids, three, and dogs, two, a lizard and a hamster, and a couple fish. But what you don't see outside right now is that there's a little bit of a thunderstorm going on. And <laughs> little do you know, but my big giant dogs are actually afraid of thunder. So today, I have some friends on the floor joining me. I hope you don't mind. And I'm gonna see if I can get one and two in the, in the shot here. This is Stella and this is Luna. These are my beautiful baby boxers and they are wonderful and lovable and so adorable, but the problem is they are afraid of thunder and lightning. So today's weather means that I can't lock them away when we're doing our lives. So they're gonna join me on my little painting journey today. And I hope you don't mind. They're going to hang out on the floor and play with some paint too. So. They say hello and they promise to be quiet and let's get started. What do you think? Let's do this, all right? Perfect, so today we have a beautiful cedar chest and I'm going to go over a couple different things today and I thought you might want to join me. So let's hop on and get started. What do you think? All right, ignore the little sniffing and the little love behind me because those puppies are gonna be glued to me until the thunderstorm passes. <laughs> so I apologize in advance. Let's go. All right, so today I am going to show you all things would you bend, all things gel stain, and we're gonna do some painting. So let's, let's do it, let's get started. Today I'm gonna to start with the would you bend moldings. All right, so Dixie Bell sells would you bend moldings. What is a would you bend molding, you ask? Well, it's amazing, number one. It's jewelry for your furniture. It's super, super fun to use and very, very easy. Um, today, I'm going to be using two moldings and I actually linked them above my head with the item number so that if you're interested in shopping these exact moldings, you can click the link, find this exact one because I put the number up there and either find your local retailer for Would You Bend or order it from Dixie Bell. These are in stock currently. I don't know how many they have, but we're gonna get started and maybe I will convince you that you have to do some shopping today. All right, so we have Would You Bend moldings today. Would you bends are bendable, stainable moldings, all right? They come in a variety of shapes. They are made from actual wood. You can drill them, you can sand them, you can paint them, you can stain them. They have all the properties of wood, but you're able to actually bend them around curves if necessary. So when you order a would you bend molding, it's going to arrive to you flat like this. See this nice little flat molding? But nothing is truly flat. So we're gonna heat this up today. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna apply it to the front of the cedar chest. Um, would you bend also comes in rolls of trim, which are amazing for covering any little, you know, marks or any little accidents that happen on your piece that you want to hide and get rid of. These little rolls of trim are the best. They come up like this in a little roll. You would heat them up, unroll them and stick them on your piece. So how do you stick them to your piece? Well, this is the easy part about would you bends. All you're going to use to apply your would you bend moldings is glue. And if you don't have any, they also have this on the Dixie Bell paint page. So you're going to need for this job a heat gun, your glue, and some tape if you wanted to tape it onto the surface. So I do have all of these things on the floor and I'm gonna show you exactly how we're gonna do this, okay? I'm gonna take my glasses off so I can see up close. When I have my glasses on, I can see your comments. When I take them off, I'm doing close-up painting. You know, old lady problems. <laughs> it is what it is. All right, so. You've got your beautiful, gorgeous Would You Bend molding. These little appliques come in a set of two. When I order them, I like to put them in corners to zhuzh up a piece, provide your piece with that extra little bit of jewelry. But today, I think we're gonna center them right here because I kind of discovered a cute little thing when I was playing with them today and seeing what way I was gonna lay them out. I discovered that if you put these two cuties together right here, they make a heart. Look at how cute that is. There's the cutest little heart right here on the front. And I thought this would be a great way to accent your piece. Once you do apply your Would You Bend moldings, you are able to start painting right away, um, as long as you feel that your glue has adhered them to the piece well enough. So we're gonna apply them, stick them on, tape them on, 
and then I'm going to pop up here and I'm going to show you all about gel stain. All right. So prep for this piece today included, first of all, cleaning with my white lightning. White lining is a cleaner that is a powder. You can hear it shake, shake, shaking around in there. I like to disperse it into a water bottle and use it to clean my piece. Well, I was cleaning today. After it was definitely clean, I wanted to save this on the floor to show you. This was still happening to my paper towels. Even after my piece had been cleaned with white lightning a couple of times, I still could see this kind of brown tone on my paper towel. Well, why am I saving this to show you? Why am I saving my garbage? Because this is actually a good teaching moment. This is not dirt. Coming off of your piece, if you've cleaned it a couple times with your white lightning, which is a super strong cleaner, it's a deglosser and it's amazing to clean your wood surfaces. If you've cleaned it a couple times and you're still getting this brown or red residual coming off onto your paper towel or your cloth, there's gonna be a problem. That tells me that this piece is going to bleed tannins. Well, what are tannins? Okay, so tannins are things that happen um, to old wood. Sometimes it's in the old stain, sometimes it's in the actual wood itself, and you don't see it on here. You wouldn't see it when you're painting, but when you go to seal your piece with your clear coat, those tannins might come through and cause a problem with stains and marks on your beautiful paint job, and you don't wanna do that. You're gonna work really hard to make this beautiful. If you didn't prepare it properly and those tannins came through, you would have to start over. So this is what I did. I came in knowing that these tannins are going to be bleeding through and protected my piece with boss. Boss comes in two colors, clear and white, okay? What is boss? Well, boss is a primer that's going to prevent bleed through. It's gonna stop stains, odors. It's going to help get your surface ready for paint. This combined with my white lightning, and my Dixie Bell's mud are essential pieces in my toolbox. If I did not have these in my toolbox, I would not be able to do what I do on the daily. So if you're starting out and you're looking at painting furniture, these are a couple of the things that I think are a necessity for painting, all right? Boss to prevent any stains and bleed through, white lightning to clean and degloss, and Dixie Bell's mud. Well, what did I do with the mud? I use it to fix these problems. If you can see on this piece, all the way over here, let's see if I can get you in, there is some white up here. So I used my white mud. It comes in black and it comes in brown. Today I used my white mud up here to replace a missing corner of veneer. There's actually a whole lot of mud on this side of the piece. Um, I'm probably not going to paint this side today because I really want it to be dry and I want it to be hardened and prepared. The mud is applied after you clean your piece. You can then either boss on top of it or boss it before. It's up to you. I will be gel staining right over top of this Dixie Bell's mud and you won't even see it. So three things that you need for preparing your piece for paint is most definitely white lightning, boss, and mud. Those three things are going to help you get ready to do the best possible job that you need to do. Okay, are you ready? Can I start now? Have I given you enough homework to catch up? <laughs> I see you all watching and learning as I go along. I'm gonna do a lot of talking, y'all. I talk a lot, I do. Um, so if Dixie Bell can answer the questions for me and I miss anything, I'm always happy to come back in when I'm finished and answer your questions then, okay? All right, let's begin. So today's starting project is Would You Bend? Again. I don't remember the number, I think it's 2124. I linked it above my head in the little blurb of information, okay? So would you bend is going to arrive flat like this. You're still gonna heat it up. I've got my heat gun plugged in and I'm gonna turn it on. So the question is, why are you heating up a flat would you bend if you're putting it on a flat surface? Well, to be honest with you, no surface, especially on old furniture and anything else is really truly flat. Um, I find that Sometimes there's bows to pieces. Sometimes your would you bend might have gotten a little bit warm in the mail and, and actually bent a little bit. And you're then not going to have a flat surface. So it's always recommended to start with heating up your would you bend and then heating it again after it's adhered just to ensure that it's flat to the surface. Got it? Got it. All right, so on the floor right now, I've got my little would you bends and I've got my heat gun. You can use a hair dryer if you don't have a heat gun, that's okay. And then you're going to see these become bendable. See that? 
you can move them, you could bend them, you could curve them around a surface. It's really cool. The other thing you're gonna need on the floor is your tape, okay? So I'm gonna get my tape ready just before we get started because I like to ensure that my wood you bends are not going to slip down and slide on my surface because I want them to be lined up like super duper, super duper perfect, okay? All right, so let me just finish heating them up and then we're gonna apply our wood glue and we're gonna stick them right on, right here on the front of the surface. Does anybody have any questions? Well, I can see you about would you bend moldings, all right? Let's see. <laughs> it is a basic tutorial, but you know what? It is a needed tutorial. If you do not do the proper preparation before you do anything to your piece, you're going to run into problems. But I knew that saving my garbage, saving my trash was gonna be important today to show you what it looks like when tannins keep bleeding through a piece. It's super important to prepare efficiently, okay? So I'm gonna take my tight bond wood glue again. If you need this, it is located on the Dixie Belle paint page. You can grab some, or you can find it at any local hardware store. And I'm going to apply this to the back side of my piece. I'm not gonna put a ton on there, and I always like to just kind of run my finger. I'm kind of a messy painter, a messy gal. I just wanna cover all my edges, okay? So this glue is on here and my would you bend is bendy and I can feel it bending in my hand. So I know that I'm gonna put these two up here to make the cutest little heart. It's gonna go like this, remember? But I'm gonna start with this one first and we're going to place it up here and I'm just gonna gently tape it on just to hold it and be my hands for me while I get the other one ready because I wanna line them up and make sure they're even Steven directly on the front of the piece, okay? So let me heat up the back of this one. Stick that glue on there. And I swear we will paint today. There will be more things other than would you bend. But I like to show you in the one hour of time that I have you, all of the things that you can do with Dixie Belle paint products because there's a lot, you guys, a lot. The possibilities are endless. And the fact that Dixie Belle carries these amazing would you bends are the bomb. I am a little bit addicted. I put them on a lot of things. I really, really like to dress up my pieces. Okay, so I'm gonna turn my back to you a tiny bit just so I can make sure that these are both lined up exactly where they need to be. So excuse my back. And I'm gonna take my tape off so that I can eyeball this and make sure that my little heart that I've made out of my Would You Bend appliques is perfect. Just checking from the front, checking, checking. Everything looks super good to me. What do you think? So cute, right? Look at that little heart. Adorable, so adorable. You wanna come in a little bit closer and have a peek? Hopefully you won't fall over. So there you go. These two Would You Bends together placed on the front of this chest has made a super cute little heart. It's stuck on there with wood glue. It's nice and even Steven and lined up. And I'm gonna tape it now for safety, okay? Let's put this down. Hopefully you don't fall over. Sorry for the jiggle joggles. Double check your pieces flat by heating it one more time, okay? One more time with the heat gun. It's just going to ensure that your piece is adhered flat to the front, all right? This also makes your glue heat up and get dry really fast. So if I wanted to, I could open up my paint cans right now and start painting over top of this. I could, but we're gonna go up to the top and work on some gel stain first. So now you have learned basic application of would you bend moldings, basic application 101, how to prep your piece, clean your piece, put on some, some mud if you have any veneer issues, make sure that you've applied your boss in clear or in white to the, make sure you're not gonna have any bleed through issues because there's nothing worse than painting an entire piece and spending all that time and then having it bleed through at the end. There's nothing you can do to stop it unless you use your boss first. It has to be done first, okay? And the other little inside scoop is, I know that there is a lot of Would You Bend sold out right now, but this Would You Bend set, this duo, is in stock right now on the webpage. Don't quote me for how long, but right now it is. And they are also getting, Dixie Bell is getting over 30 um, exclusive designs just for them from Would You Bend, where you will not be able to get them anywhere else 
but here with us at Dixie Bell. So how cool is that? Good? Got it? Let's move on. Guess what? I don't want to I don't want to jinx myself, but these little puppy dogs are being super quiet and nice right now. Super excited. It could have been a disaster in here. You never know what could happen at the top drawer RVA. Kids, dogs, bumblebees flying in windows. It's all happened before. <laughs> so I'm going to bring this forward and I'm going to hop up and I'm going to show you how to apply gel stain very easily with an applicator pad, all right? Now watch, just because I move, I bet you my doggies are gonna come along for the ride. <laughs> all right, let's do this. Where's my stool? Excuse me, puppies. We're here, perfect. Hi, Erin, how are you? All right, here we go. So, the top of this piece has been cleaned with white lightning. You can see that minor repair over in the corner with my Dixie Belle mud. Yes, it's white. Yes, my gel stain is dark, but guess what? I like a deep, dark finish on my gel stain. I will do two coats, and it's going to cover that mud no problem. You're not going to see that at all. It will be covered and gone and disappeared. That little veneer issue will be fixed up. Easy peasy. No problems. Okay? So let's do this. So we have this gorgeous top of the cedar chest. I sanded a couple small scratches. Okay? The reason I sanded the scratches is because I didn't want them being like a big divot, a big gouge in the top of my piece. I wanted to make sure that it was going to be as flat as possible for me to get in here and apply a nice smooth coat of my no pain gel stain. So today we're gonna to play with no pain gel stain and espresso. This stuff is oil-based, it is a little thicker, and it is it does have like a tiny little smell. If this smell bothers you, do this in a well-ventilated area. You can open your windows, doesn't bother me at all. I actually think it kind of smells like licorice. So, <laughs> it doesn't bother me. But I have stepped on this before, so let's try and put this under the chest where I'm not gonna step on the lid. Because by the end of this live, I will be wearing all of the products somewhere on me. <laughs> I like to wear a glove um, because if this gets in your manicure, it's really hard to get out. Not like I have a manicure, but I don't really want it in my nails. Well, how do I apply my gel stain? So Dixie Bell sells these really great applicator pads. See these right here? This little applicator pad is smooth, it's non-shedding, and it's like a terry cloth finish. When I have a long surface like this that I'm gonna have to get in and work with, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna be able to keep my gel stain smooth and movable from one end to the other, okay? In order to do that, you need to have a nice smooth applicator pad. If you needed to, you could cut this in half, um, but I just buy a bunch of these and keep them on hand because these work great with your easy peasy gel stain as well as your easy peasy spray for your wax. When you spray a surface and wipe it on, this is what I use. All right, so multiple uses for these little guys. Get them if you're getting gel stain, they go together. All right, cookies and milk, you have to kind of have both. They work really well together. All right, so let's do this. I've opened and propped open the top of this little, this little chest. Um, so that I can get my finger under the lip, all right? Because when I do my gel stain and bring it around, I wanna make sure that I'm coming in underneath this lip and covering this surface. Because when they open this, they're gonna see that tiny little bit. So this way I can um, save my, my time. By keeping it open, I can just slide in underneath and get that done. I see a question, so I got distracted. Can you wash them and reuse? You probably could if you're using something else like maybe your easy peasy spray wax, but this is an oil-based product. This needs to be kind of thrown away after use. It's a one, a one hit wonder. Um, but I'm gonna show you how easy it is to use them. All right, let's bring you in a little closer and I might chop my head off on the screen, but I want you to be able to get the best view possible. I'm gonna try not to run over my dogs with my rolly stool. <laughs> difficult, difficult day, but my babies need to be close. It's thunder and lightning outside. They don't wanna be scared. Okay. So here we go. Gel stain goes on the pad. You're going to work in the same direction as the wood grade. You wanna go from one end to the other in smooth strokes, all right? So here we go. I always like to start with my edges. When you dip it in, it's thick like pudding. See this right here? And you're gonna take it and you're gonna wipe it on, okay? Actually, I might angle you down a tiny bit more so you can see even better. All right, so you're gonna come in and you're just gonna wipe this on. I know I'm gonna need two coats 
and I know I probably will have a tiny touch up under the lip when my video is over because right now I'm just trying to show you everything that I need to show you in one hour time frame. All right, working around my little stick here. So you can already see this really pretty color change, right? All of a sudden it went from a really kind of gross orange to this really pretty dark espresso. And I'm gonna show you how this works over top of the Dixie Bell's mud. Here I go on the corner, see that corner right there? This is where the mud was. I'm literally going right over top. You can't even see it, all right? So I'm just touching my edges, making sure all of my edges are covered. The other reason I like to do the edges first is because it keeps it nice and smooth when I do the top surface. And you're able to get a nice, even coverage all the way across because my edges are done first. Okay, so there you go, edges are done. Is it perfect right now? No. Is it covering 100% right now? No, but I'm gonna come in here later after it dries. Depending on your humidity level, it might take a day. I did one in the shed the other day and it took over a full day to dry. You need this to be dry in between your coats because if it's not dry in between your coats, when you come back in, for your second coat, it's gonna pull off your hard work and you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure it's dry and not tacky. The other thing you're gonna see right now applying this one coat on is a variation in the wood color. That's all right because this is just my first coat, right? I'm gonna be doing two coats. So for now, this first coat is just a base, just getting it on nice and smooth so that when I come in on my second coat, I can make it nice and even and perfect. What do you think? You're seeing like a super duper transformation right in front of your own eyes. <laughs> this is the best way, you guys, to update furniture and make it look super rich, super amazing, and super fast. But I do like these pads for keeping it smooth and keeping it even, surface all right look at that i didn't step on any puppy dogs i didn't fall over <laughs> and i didn't hurt myself hooray let's push it back a bit and make sure i get in these little grooves in the front okay because these little guys i couldn't really see from the front you have a little bit of work time with it not a ton all right you can't do this forever you can't just keep playing with it and hoping that you know you've got it right you kind of like need to stop because it's gonna to start to dry and get tacky and you're going to have to apply your second coat at another time. But I just wanna make sure it's on there smooth and even. And then I'm gonna bring you in nice and close so you can see the difference. And I can hear the thunder. It's gonna rain even more. Okay, for now, this is good, I'm happy with this. I'm gonna take off my glove, close my can, and bring you in a little bit closer so that you can see exactly how no pain gel stain looks on top. Let's see, super nice, right? So yes, you can see a little bit of striations in the wood right now. This is only the first coat. I like a thick coat of gel stain. I'll be sealing this with my gator hide. I like to have it be deep and rich and dark. And remember that corner over there, that tiny corner that had the mud? Can't even see where that was now. What do you think? How fast was that? Do you think you could try it? I think that everybody could try it. If you love this, throw me some hearts. Let me know that this is something that you, you like and you might give it a try. Because I think people get scared of gel stain and they shouldn't be. I put it on a lot of my pieces, a lot of my pieces. Um, number one, because it's easy. Number two, because it looks like a million bucks. How good does that look? So good, right? Super good. All right, well, let's continue. You ready to play some paint? What do you think? I should put my glasses on and see what everybody's saying. That was a little hard to do because I had to climb behind the piece, <laughs> but I can still stay attached with my mic and get it done. You like the color now. Do I ever leave it at one coat? I do. And I do that often, 
but because the mud is going to absorb a little bit more of the stain, that little corner is gonna be a little bit darker, so I'm definitely gonna do two coats on this. I've done many, many pieces, especially when they have like that red tone of wood. Coming in with an espresso or a colonial, I always go a little bit darker and just wiping it on. You can still see the wood grain, but the color changes for a, a better look, more of a rich, deep look, rather than that you know bright orange look. This doesn't seem to be very much in fashion, this totally seems to be in fashion. People like a dark, um, a dark color. So you think that the wood, you, you guys, you're gonna stress me out. So you don't think my wood you bend is centered? I think the camera might be crooked, but let me look. Right now the camera is crooked. How about we make you straight? Is that better? <laughs> let me look up close. You know how I know it's straight, you guys? Because before I started, I'm a smart cookie, and I came in here with a, a pen and marked off exactly where it needed to go. It's nice and lined up. <laughs> so it is straight, it is straight. Don't psych me out like that. You scared me for a hot minute. All right, so who's ready to play with some paint? What do you think? You ready? And my puppies, if you missed them before, are still sleeping and looking beautiful on the floor. Luna and Stella are being nice and quiet. They're afraid of thunder if you missed the intro. They don't, um, they don't do well in storms. So I have to spoil my babies and let them stay in here with me when I'm working. <laughs> So again, if you hear puppy dog noises, it's just them, but they kind of own me, so it doesn't work the other way around. All right, let's start with some paint. All right, thank you. Terry thinks it looks perfect, hooray, good. All right, so back to the beginning here. I'm gonna take off my tape because I'm able to paint right over top of the Would You Bend moldings right away. No problem, you don't have to wait. Um, you could if you wanted to, but when I put them on, we glued them on with the wood glue. We heated them up to make sure that they're nice and flat to the surface, and they are. This feels actually really sturdy and pretty stuck on to me. So let's put this little guy over here, because today we're only gonna paint the front of this. I still have a little bit of mud work to do on the side of this piece. Plus this is really long and I don't wanna move it all around and get you all jiggle joggled in the way. So what are we gonna to paint today? Everybody ready? Did you have any guesses? If you joined me on Instagram today, um, I actually let you guys pick the moldings on Instagram and pick my colors. <laughs> so I didn't even pick them. My fans picked them and we're gonna paint and have some fun. So today we're gonna to do a cute little blend of antebellum blue and vintage duck egg. We're gonna paint this entire front surface in two coats and I'm going to show you how a blended duo of colors really pops with the Would You Bend. And then later on when this is dry, if you wanted to come over to my own Facebook page, which I did link above my head, we'll play with Dixie Dirt and we'll talk about sealing everything. All right, sound like a plan? It's a plan. Let's begin. So today we're gonna do the initial base coat of antebellum and vintage duck egg. I have a couple brushes on the floor you all know that my, my go-to standby brush is a medium flat synthetic brush. I am a little obsessed with my medium flats. They're actually wet because I've already been painting today, surprise, and um, I had to clean them. So you can tell how well loved my brushes are. Look at those handles. So much paint on the handles. But I did bring another one in, which is my mini, and I might have to get into this one today just to do a little bit of blending, all right? So brushes used, flat, flat medium, and colors used today, vintage duck egg, antebellum blue. Let's begin. I also have my spray misting bottle, but I won't need it until the second coat. So a couple of weeks ago, I did a gorgeous, I called it my Frankenstein vanity, a gorgeous Frankenstein vanity. Um, and why did I call it that? Well, that was because it was made up of salvaged material. I'm a big fixer, you guys. Majority of the pieces that you see me paint are broken and I need to repair them and fix them and get them ready to be beautiful again. So I did a Frankenstein vanity made from multiple pieces of salvage and rebuilt the entire back piece, as well as rebuilt a corner. And I painted it in a gorgeous antebellum blue and vintage duck egg blend. I wouldn't call it an ombre. I would definitely call it like a blend. We're almost like we're gonna mix these two colors together 
so that you won't be able to tell where one starts and the other one ends. And the reason I like this style of blending is number one is because it's easy. It's easy. Anybody can do this. Number two is because it's not perfect and you can be messy and play with your paint, which is the best way to do it. FYI, after the video is over, I will open the lid and paint this entire top piece. All right. And I know somebody's going to ask me, somebody always says, Hey, are you going to paint the back of that drawer, <laughs> the side of that piece? Yeah, I will. I'll do it after. So you're not bored. Okay. So this is antebellum blue. Antebellum blue is one of the newer Dixie Belle colors. It's a really, really pretty blue. This is the other reason why I like my flat medium brush. See how fast I can kind of cut in and work around these small details. It really is a versatile brush. I understand that Dixie Belle does not have all of their brushes in stock right now, but guess what? Every week they're adding more. Every week they're restocking. So if you're on the wait list and you're looking for an amazing brush, make sure that you check for a flat medium because that just lets you get all of the things done super fast super easy otherwise i'd have to get out like my tiny little craft brush and fuss around and eh, no nah, you don't need to do that with this okay so i'm just going to do the outer edge all in antebellum i'm going to keep a separate brush for each color which there's only two so that's not hard and we're going to blend it on the second coat okay i like to kind of pull these two colors together but it can't be done until the second coat so here's the trick with my would you bend moldings. The detail on these guys is amazing. They're thick. I mean, the thickness of these moldings, is probably like a quarter to a half an inch thick. All right. If you need metric, one inch is equal to 2.5 centimeters. I know that because I'm Canadian. <laughs> so it's uh, one of those things. Sorry, my math. That's made me think I learned in metric. So I'm going to take my blue here and I'm going to go around this gorgeous, thick molding. I want to use my darkest color, which is this antebellum, and I want to get it right in all of these little grooves. Because when I come back in and do a kind of a blended finish using the vintage duck egg, the vintage duck egg is going to come in and sit on top of the raised detail. So this darkness, this beautiful antebellum, is going to highlight the thickness of this molding. And then pouncing it in, you're going to see me keep a wet brush when I'm getting it into all of these details, making sure that I'm covering all of my edges. But by using a dark color like this, and then when we blend it and we add this lighter coat on top, this would you be molding is going to just pop right off the piece. It's going to look so good. And then of course I'm going to put gold gilding wax on it because you all know I'm obsessed with my gold gilding wax. I'm like a broken record with that stuff. I put it on everything. Okay. So since these wood you bend moldings are wood, they're made from wood particles. They're actual wood in there. They are going to paint the same as all of this. Okay. It's going to paint just the same. If you wanted to stain it and you were staining a piece, you could stain it. If you needed to uh, drill a hole through it to put a handle in, you could drill a hole through it. It has all the same properties of wood, but for me, it's just jewelry on my piece. It's just making everything super fancy. And look, same as last week, I got gel stain on my wall. Surprise. Guess what I have on the floor? Wall paint. I'll fix it after. <laughs> Guaranteed somebody's going to say, do you know you got paint in your wall? Yeah, I always do. It's all here. It's all on the floor. It is what it is. We're messy around here, but we have fun, right? Okay. So another brush, flat medium, jumping into this vintage duck egg. I'm not going to blend my colors yet. Okay. I'm just going to put them down and kind of start to decide where they're going to live by laying this initial color down and deciding what you want to do. It kind of gives you a preview of what your piece is going to look like. So this is the time where you kind of come in and go, hmm, I want more blue over here, antebellum, or I want more vintage duck egg over here. It just gives you the kind of preview of where your colors are going to live. So I think I want to add more blue, obviously, down here, right? We'll put a little bit more antebellum. 
on the bottom of this piece. And then you guys are gonna be so surprised at how fast these blend together because they're so close. Oh, I thought I just painted my dog, but I didn't. <laughs> that happens around here too. I actually thought I just got her with a paintbrush, but she's good. She's good. A little antebellum blue and a puppy, not a bad look. Okay, so that's better. Okay, that's better. So I fixed that. So now by looking at this, I can see I needed that little bit more of antebellum. I'm just gonna finish my duck egg. And get it where it's gonna live. Okay, so on the floor I have a roll of paper towels. I keep paper towel handy because when you're gonna start blending your colors together, um, you might get a little bit too much paint on your brushes. So I would probably need to blot off my brush on the second coat. So let's go back in with the antebellum, add that kind of second coat, making sure we're covering all of our wood. You're gonna see me keep this brush a little bit more damp on the second coat, making sure that it's nice and smooth. Keeping a damp brush helps you eliminate brush strokes and helps you um, minimize those lines, okay? So that's why you see us ladies on here always spraying our brushes. It just helps get that kind of self-leveling an extra kick. It just makes it work that much easier. Should I take a break, read some comments? I haven't seen what everybody's saying in a little while. We're still good? We're still good. All right. So hopefully, I know I've missed stuff just because I'm talking, but I swear I will come back in <laughs> and answer questions later. And I know Dixie Bell's helping me out too. They're super knowledgeable people. And I always have great fans on here helping me answer questions. There's always somebody on here answering with the right answer. You guys are super knowledgeable, a bunch of people. Okay. So Dixie Bell's Antebellum Blue is one of those colors that is highly, highly pigmented and super, super delicious. Um, I really like this color because the, it almost goes on with like a one coat coverage. Should you do two? Probably. Am I checking? Yeah. But it is so easy to cover your surface without having to do multiple, multiple coats of paint. You kind of are tricking the system here, getting away with um, less paint, which is great, right? Save your paint for more projects. All right, so now that that's done, let's go into my vintage duck egg, making sure that I've covered my entire surface, that there's no wood showing through. Keeping it damp, helping that minimize those brush strokes. All right, so this is where I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start with the middle. I've got my paper towel on the floor. I'm gonna blot off the extra amount that's on my brush. All right, there's still vintage duck egg on this brush. I am going to take this gorgeous detail and pop it right now. And this is really easy to do, y'all. This is not a hard thing to do. These two colors together are so close that this blending is gonna be lickety split fast, all right? Super fast. So I've blotted my brush so it's not excess amount of paint. I'm gonna kinda hold it a little bit higher up on the brush so that I have a bit more control. When you hold it back here, it's more like a you know spread across the whole piece. When you see me switch up to here, that's when you know I'm gonna get crazy and start doing some blending. Everybody does it different. You'll find your own way. I'm gonna wet my brush. I'm gonna to start to pull these two colors together on the front of this molding. I'm not going to jam it in because I wanna keep some of this darker antebellum happening. I might even go in and add some more antebellum and just kind of mush it around in the middle so that it gets that really pretty blend. Having that darker shadowing happen around your piece of your molding just makes it look so good. Again, blot off that excess on your paper towel. Just 
Sorry, my back is to you. I find that rude, but I have to concentrate and look at what I'm doing. Okay, so now my antebellum and my vintage duck cake has come together. I'm gonna bring it in a little bit closer so you can see. It's blended together to kind of give a shadowed effect. The antebellum is still hiding out underneath here, giving this piece the ability to just kind of pop off. It looks so good. And the reason why I'll be adding my Dixie Dirt is because it's just gonna even make it more pop. Okay, by adding like a darker wax or your Dixie Dirt, you're able to really get a wow factor um, that will just blow your socks off. It's so good. I'm not gonna be able to do it today because it has to be dry. So you do have to come over to my Facebook page, um, which I did link above my head. And you can come follow me and we'll do it together over on my page, okay? So I'm just gonna keep smoothing this vintage duck egg, making sure it looks nice and fresh and smooth. Spraying my brush. This piece is really long, oh my gosh. Just kind of waving out these two blues together. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. I'm happy with the way that looks. So now, if you wanted to add more dark into the center, go back to your antebellum blue brush. If you want to bring this vintage duck egg out, which I want to do, keep your vintage duck egg brush, okay? I'm gonna go over top of all the area. Again, holding that brush so far down. See how far down I'm holding? Holding it that way gives me the control. Blotting off onto your paper towel, your excess amount of paint. And I'm just pulling these two colors together. I have to break this down. Oh gosh. I can't, I have long arms, but I'm not that long. I can't work too far down. So short feathery strokes is going to help pull these two colors together. You choose which way you wanna go. Do you wanna go left and right? Perfect. You wanna go up and down? Fine. Find what works for you. I'm just showing you the way that I like to do this. Everybody's different. No art is perfect. Everybody's painting style is a little different. You're gonna watch all of us brand ambassadors do different things and we're all gonna get different effects. I think that it's important for you to try this, but I also think it's important for you to find your own way. Find the way that works the best for you. I think that that corner looks super good. I'm loving this blend right here. I'm loving the meld. It's just like a little mix of that gorgeous antebellum. See how pretty that came together? See how easily they came together? So easy. Oh, look, water's dripping. Just clean it up. That's why I don't saturate my brush and that's the other reason why I don't spray my piece. If you sprayed your piece, your water's gonna drip. You're gonna ruin your blend. Just stay on top of it. Okay, so how are you gonna blend this? So then you're gonna go back to your antebellum and pull it in on the outer edge. I'm not doing it here. I'm not doing it on the inner, inner lip. I'm just kind of pulling this color together. So now, this is not true antebellum. This is not true vintage duck egg. These are mushed, technical term, mushed together to make your own custom color. You just created, out of two colors, your own custom Dixie Belle color. And when people see it, they're gonna be like, holy, how'd she do that? That's such a cool color. What colors are those? You could do this, it's super easy, like five minutes, and that part was done, right? So I'm just gonna to continue to kind of pull that meshed, blended color over. I'm gonna come around my little lock. If you felt like you wanted to tape that off, if it was easier for you, you could. Um, I'm just gonna work around it, because that's the way I roll. Fly by the seat of my pants kind of a girl. Can you see how this color is different than the true antebellum? See how it's just a little bit lighter because I've just mushed Again, with the technical terms, mushed all these colors together. Mush them. Luna, hush. All right.
Easy peasy, okay? <laughs> Did you hear that? I told her to be quiet, my puppy, and she just gave me like the biggest, deepest sigh, like, oh my gosh, mom, you're so annoying. Okay, if you wanted to add more paint onto your brush, you can. If you felt like it was getting too light, and you wanna go back to that kind of darker tone. How can you see? Angle's still pretty good. Let's go back to the vintage duck egg brush. Blot it off. Let's start to pull this part together. It's already actually a lot more dry than the other side was, so let's just get cracking. And by adding the Dixie dirt to this detail, when I come back in, when it's actually dry and we work together and we do that, remember I told you we'll do that part on my page, you're able to really, really get an amazing blended effect without doing a ton of work. Look, remember I'm holding my brush really far down, giving me the control. I hear thunder. They're still sleeping. I've tried thunder shirts for my dogs. I've tried calming oils for my dogs. The only thing that works is when they're Velcroed right to my butt. <laughs> they want to be as close to me as possible when it's thunder and lightning outside. Can't say I blame them. Okay, this edge is good. Let's go back to the antebellum brush. Remember, this is not true antebellum anymore. This is all mixed together with that vintage duck egg to make our own little custom color of blues. So you're gonna kinda wanna recoat this whole area because this blue is not true antebellum anymore. You're gonna wanna come all the way down on the feet, just making sure that your mix comes all the way around, okay. So I see one spot I'm not happy with. I'm not loving this little shadow right over here. And now we mixed it up even more. So let's add a little bit more vintage ducking to my brush and fix that corner. There's no mistakes in painting. You just need to find the way that you can fix it. I actually like it when things happen when I'm working live. I tend to go live on my own Facebook page often, um, trying something new that I've never done before just because I kinda wanna show you all that everybody's learning something. Everybody's always learning. There's always gonna be something that happens. And it's good to just kind of work through it. That's better. Just that blend for some reason was kind of looking funny to me. So now I have to go back up here and fix this part again. Once this part is done, I think that the front will be done as well. Okay, let me look. I'm seeing a gorgeous blend, dark to light to dark. Coming in later on with my Dixie Dirt is gonna make this really pop out and look super good. I almost just sat on my glasses, surprise. So how are we doing? Everybody still hanging in? Let's see, the colors, Antebellum Blue, Vintage Duck Egg, combined together to make this really pretty, pretty blue. Um, you're not making a custom color by pouring it in and mixing it up. This is just like an ombre blend. You know, this is really easy to do too because it's like a, an, kind of like a easier way to get an ombre. You know, if it's not perfect, it's okay. Nobody's gonna see that it's not perfect somewhere because they're just gonna be like wowed by this color. This color is so good, all right? The detail here is the added Would You Bend Moldings, which I linked above my head. Before I started this video, it might not be anymore, but before I started this video, this was in stock. This is two pieces that I pushed together to make the cutest heart. How cute is that? Super amazing. Um, the top of this piece is one coat of gel stain in espresso, okay? It's not perfect yet because I'm going to have to wait for it to get dry. Once it's dry, I will come back in with the second coat in my applicator pad. I will smooth on top another even deep coat of espresso. Once that is dry, I will use Gator Hide to seal the top. And on my base, I like to use a satin clear coat or that flat matte clear coat. And then I will come in and do my dirt. The color of dirt that I'm gonna be using today or later when it dries, if I have enough time, 
is Dixie Dirt and Earth. So this pigment will come in here, sit in all of these details, sit around this entire edge and frame and make it look old and aged and it's gonna be so pretty. You know I'm gonna be putting gold gilding wax on this heart. Carol, I can see you asking me that question. I am obsessed with gold and shiny. So I will be getting out some gilding wax and doing touching details on there, touching that beautiful shine, that little bit of gold, because every piece needs a tiny bit of glam. You know I need to be that little bit extra. <laughs> Do something fancy pants because I love to accent these details. So there you go, what did I miss? Anything, any questions? That was a lot of talking in one hour. I helped you with the blending issue. I am glad. These two colors, because these are so close, so close, this is gonna make your job easier. Work smarter, not harder. Working in this color, cold, like so if this was like aubergine and amethyst, easy. If this was aubergine and you know, apricot, super hard, super hard. Stay close in the color palette. By staying close, you're able to make it an easier blend. I've created a custom color out of antebellum blue and vintage duck egg. Do you love it? It's so pretty, right? It's super, super rich. So today on my own Facebook page, later on, come over and see me. Make sure you click and follow. Um, I do not have a like button anymore on my Facebook page. Facebook is being nice and difficult and it's uh, taken away the ability for people to like some Facebook pages, but you can still follow me. It's the same thing. If you follow me, then I'm gonna get all the notifications and you're gonna be able to see all the fun things that I create. I will be doing a second coat of the espresso, gator hide on the top, satin clear coat on the base, Dixie Dirt with Easy Peasy Spray Wax and my bell brush. Stay tuned, to be continued, y'all. All right, and next week, 3 p.m., live on the Dixie Bell Paint page, I'll be back, but guess what? I won't be here. I'm going to the beach, y'all. <laughs> I'm going to the beach next week and I'm bringing you with me. We are going to paint a beach inspired piece of furniture at the beach. So we will be at the beach house, not on the actual beach, but I'm still bringing you with me for a tiny vacation. So come join me next week, 3 p.m. EST, and I will be in North Carolina at the beach. Hopefully it'll be warm and sunny and we're going to paint clouds and beaches and sea spray and all sorts of delicious things. You're always gonna learn a lot in the one hour that I've got you because I talk a lot, y'all. It's my jam, it's the way that it is. And thank you for letting me have my puppy dogs join us on the little journey today. They were really good and quiet and I'm sorry, but they're afraid of thunder so they had to come with me. Um, what time later on my page today? Honestly, I don't know. It depends on kids and life and dinner but it will be at some point. So if you follow me, you should get a notification that I am live and when I go live and you can come over and watch me. All right, thank you. Hi, Cynthia, how are you? So that is it, all right? I, um, I'll be back next week at three, but if you wanna see me, come over to my own Facebook page. We'll finish this guy up. We'll play with some puppies and that'll be that, all right? I hope everybody has a great day. Stay dry, it's thunder and lightning here and that's it, no more talking for me. Peace. See you next week, 3 p.m. Bye.